Hello, welcome to the Wildcat Insider, your source for stories from grades 7, 8, and 9. I'm your host, Jack Sacrapani, alongside Ian DeServe. Throughout the year, students in foreign language classes have opportunities to participate in cultural experiences. On September 30th, Frau Wilkerson's German students participated in a cultural lesson on the Bavarian tradition of Oktoberfest, complete with song, food, and dance. We had a chance to check out the experience and talk to some of the participants. In Oktoberfest, we learn about the heritage of um, the wedding that began Oktoberfest. Another thing we do is we focus on how in Oktoberfest we all eat together. So we set, we do t tables and we all sit together and eat. My favorite part about Oktoberfest is being able to eat the German food. Um, my favorite thing was probably like food and pretzels and the tables and the cookies. I like the food the best. Uh, the potato pancakes and the schnitzel are really fun. And also love the overall atmosphere. It's really like cozy and comfortable sitting there with friends and family and having a good time and enjoying good food and just being there. So that's my most favorite thing about the Oktoberfest, yes. On October 7th, 8th grade web leaders hosted 7th graders for the annual web luncheon. Here's some highlights. My favorite part about being a web leader is planning fun events for the seventh graders and doing them. My favorite part about the web leader lunch is meeting new people. My favorite part about the web lunch um, are all the snacks that the web leaders brought because they're really good. Earlier this week, the web leaders were back at it again creating a fun experience for our 7th graders. The annual Fall Fest was filled with fun activities such as pie in the face competition, cornhole, can jam, donut races, potato sack races, face painting, crafts, and snacks. Reporters Dalton King, Parker Davis, and Derek Scheller captured some highlights and talked to some students about the event. Make 7th graders feel safe and be a part of the junior high family. It's building friendships between 7th graders and getting them in, more involved in the school and having fun. I hope that all the 7th graders get to make new friends this year. I, I hope that uh, everyone can be welcomed here at the Fall Fest and have fun. Uh, so tell me, why do you think Fall Fest is such a big event at the junior high? Oh, for so many reasons. Number one, for two years in a row now the weather has been unbelievable. Number two, our web leaders are incredible. They planned all of this. Um, some teachers kind of facilitated it, but they had to come up with the ideas. They had to decide what stations they were working at. They are having as much fun, I think, as the seventh graders, if not more. Um, we just have a great seventh grade group this year, and they're into it. I mean, who doesn't want to get their face painted and enter a pie eating contest, you know? It's a great opportunity to make new friends. And have some fun outside of school. Uh, I'd say Fall Fest is important because it gives students the opportunity to, you know, mingle, get to know each other. They may not see each other in class all the time. They may be in different classes. Uh, so this is a really good opportunity for all the kids to get together. So it's just a good, good all-around time, good community event. Let's get after it. I feel very good. Although Mrs. Finger, she almost had me. She is my mother. So. Next time, I'll let her win, so I won't get grounded. Thank you. I'm gonna beat him next time, he's in big trouble. And he, I'm proud of my son, he's a good athlete. All right, how are you guys feeling right now? It was a big blast, and this guy's, these two are big troublemakers. And tr and I, I, I feel oh, the way I look, yeah. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Yeah, we feel like a big marshmallow mountain mid, or something. Mid, uh, mid, cap. Mid. I feel like I am in a sticky situation again. at the moment. Sticky but situation. But this is yeah. certainly a place they where there are a lot bandits. of pie stabilities. Yeah. We call <laughs> sticky bandits. My favorite part of Fall Fest is the photo shoots. My favorite part of Fall Fest is being able to be with your friends. All the games and the food. I like cornhole because that's what I'm doing right now. The face painting and the food. Probably the, the food is probably the cornhole. 
the music. And my favorite part of Fall Fest is cornhole. My favorite part of Fall Fest is dancing. <laughs> my favorite part about Fall Fest is the cornhole. My favorite part about Fall Fest is the cornhole. The pie eating contest. Mine hang out with my friends. There's a lot of local history for students to experience in our area. To expand the U.S. history learning experience, the ninth grade class went to Fort Ligonier. Reporters Mason Rubis and Owen Burkett have the story. So we had an opportunity uh, a couple years back to consider going to Fort Ligonier, and it was such, such an easy decision to, to push for with it being part of the ninth grade U.S. history curriculum and then also being right here in our own backyard. Uh, it was an easy decision. I really liked when they shot the gun. My favorite part about Fort Ligonier was probably like knowing like how all of the soldiers live. Another ninth grade highlight is annual homecoming dance, sponsored by Senior High Student Council. The dance was held at Ida Wild Park for the second year in a row. Julia Macy and Aaron Ulewick share some highlights. The MindWorks class held their Attitude of Gratitude gathering on October 13th. Students were invited to share three items that bring about a feeling of gratitude in their lives as well as the small stories behind them. My dog's name is Mace and in the mornings he makes me feel happy because he'll like wake me up in the mornings. I brought an elephant from my uncle. I got a bag of coins here. Uh, these are meaningful to me because um, my grandfather he collects coins and well he kind of like passed that on to me and I'm into it and that's like a fun thing to do together we'd like talk about coins and stuff so this is a, a ukulele and it belonged to my great uncle but uh, he recently passed away So now I just have this. This is hung in my room and I play it almost every night. October 7th was a 28th annual band night at Memorial Stadium. Reporters Gabby Cunningham, Sarah Levan, and Brooke Cole spoke to Mr. Jordan and some of the band members about the night. The purpose of band night is to get our 7th and 8th graders here in the junior high uh, to uh, mix with our Wildcat band members at a Gray Latrobe football game. My favorite thing about band night was probably meeting all the kids. My favorite part of band night was sitting in the stands and playing with the rest of the marching band. My favorite part about band night was all the people that you got to meet. So we were excited this year to bring back uh, our 8th graders to marching band. It's been uh, a good number of years, about 7 years since we've had them. So this year we were glad to bring them back in and join. So this year 8th grade, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade could play together as the Wildcat band. My favorite thing about marching band is learning all the fundamentals and stand music. This week is Red Ribbon Week. It is the largest drug abuse prevention campaign in the United States. Evie St. Clair and Gabby Behe share some reasons why it's important to live drug free. If you use drugs, one bad choice leads to another. Once you start using tobacco or drinking alcohol or taking drugs, it becomes a lot easier to start experimenting with other harmful substances. When you don't do drugs, you ensure a better fu future. The choices you will make now affect the rest of your life. To add, if you don't use drugs, you will be happier and more content. Even though drugs, alcohol, and tobacco have short-term happiness, they will lead to depression, guilt, fear, paranoia, and despair. You will also sleep sound and have better memory. 
tobacco, alcohol, and drugs interrupt normal sleep patterns and often interfere with new learning in the normal memory processes. Lastly, you will feel healthier and more fit. Smoking slows down the flow of blood, drugs present a wide variety of health risks, and alcohol is a depressant. The theme of this Red Ribbon Week is celebrate life, live drug free. Here are some of the highlights. We head over to Sori Butina and our team of sports reporters for some updates on the fall sports teams. Thanks, Jack. The fall sports teams have been working hard. Here's Mitch Horner with an update on the football and swim teams. Thanks, Sawyer. The boys' football team is having a great season so far with a record of 4-3. and three. Led by 8th graders Hunter Snyder, Clayton Burkett, and Tyler Wisniewski, the boys have battled hard. I had a chance to interview Mr. Trenton and some players. I pancake somebody. I'm awesome, buddy. My favorite memory from this season is getting my first touchdown. Uh, mine is probably when we won our first game. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, I really don't have a favorite memory. I mean, we, we've had a lot of good times. It's hard to pick one. Um, we have a lot of fun as coaches, coaching together, and we have a lot of fun with the kids. And, you know, we just, we've had a good time these last couple months. And, you know, we're looking forward to having a good and strong uh, last couple weeks of the season. Moving on, the swim team has been having a great season. They have gone against Kiskey, Franklin Regional, Derry, Hempfield, Woodland Hills, Penn Trafford, Mount Pleasant, Somerset, Norwin, and Greensburg Salem. I spoke to a few of the swimmers about the season so far. My favorite part about swimming is just like the thrill of an event, like when the buzzer goes off, and you just have to give it your best shot. My favorite thing about swimming is doing 50 backstroke. My favorite thing about swimming is doing the freestyle stroke. Thanks, Mitch. We go to Brock Polinski with an update on the boys' soccer and cross-country teams. Thanks, Sawyer. The boys' soccer team had a very successful season. The team, led by captains Ryan Gunther, Jacob Stevenson, and Nolan Thomas, had a record of 5-2-2. Two and two. We spoke to some of the players. The opponent this year for soccer was probably Enfield. Our toughest opponent was probably PT. I think our toughest opponent was probably Plum. Our toughest opponent was Franklin Regional this year. The cross country team traveled to White Oak Park to finish up their season at the WAADA Championship. The boys finished seventh out of 14 teams with 187 points. Leading the way for the boys was Charlie Heese with a medal for fourth place, Mick Millay in 40th, Carl Necker in 44th, Corbin Baum in 49th, Bowden Zalewski in 50th, and Mateo Durazio in 72nd. In the girls' championship race, the Lady Wildcats took fourth with 131 points out of the 10 teams. Leading the way for the girls was Angelica Dent, who was the runner-up in second for a medal, followed by Miriam Fridge in 26th, Peyton Schmucker in 41st, Kennedy Simon in 42nd, Caitlin Gaffney in 40th, Ella Wonell in 51st, and Sam Uthers in 59th. In the combined boys and girls open race, Grace Pittman finished 17th and Keegan Shirley finished in 18th. We had a chance to catch up with some of the runners. Favorite race of uh, cross country is probably our Wada's meet. Uh, and my best meet of the season was probably my meet at Plum. My favorite race this season was at Wada the championships. Thanks Brock. Now we head over to Andy Tash with more on the girls soccer and girls basketball teams. Thanks, Sora. Their girls' soccer team played very well this season, led by captains Emerson Shine, Alexa Yurko, and Sierra Aegis. The team pulled off, pulled together, and left their mark on the field. I had a chance to talk to some of the players about the season. Um, my favorite memory from soccer is when we were singing on the bus to a soccer game. Um, mine is the preseason party and tying Plum on Rossi. Moving to the court, the seventh and eighth grade girls' basketball teams are led by coach Mrs. Vasilko and are off to a great start. The 8th graders are 3-2 and two and the 7th graders are 1-1. One and one. We spoke to coach Vasilko and some of the girls about how the season is going so far. My goal is to get better at shooting. Uh, my goal is to win a lot of games this year. Our goal is for the 7th and 8th grade team. Since we have a lot of new players, uh, we just want to make sure that they are improving and getting the necessary basic skill set they need with their ball handling, their shooting, and just understanding the game of basketball. 
With our eighth graders who are a little more experienced, um, my goal is to see them work harder together as a team um, and to get a few wins this year. That's all for Wildcat Sports News. Back to you, Ian. Thanks, Sawyer. In national sports, Game 1 of the World Series is tonight. Owen Tesovich and Colin Graham highlight some interesting facts about the event. With the World Series coming soon, here are a few facts about it and its history. Date of the first World Series, October 1st, 1903, Boston Americans beat the Pittsburgh Pirates 5-3. However, the Boston Americans are no longer a team. Some of the teams with the most World Series wins over the years are the Yankees with 27 wins, the Cardinals with 11, Athletics and Reds tied with 9, the Giants have 8, and the Dodgers have 7. The New York Yankees have played 35% of the World Series over the years and won 27 of them. Deion Sanders was the first and only person to play in one Super Bowl and one World Series. In the finals, the Phillies versus the Astros. One teacher who hits it out of the park in his classroom is Mr. Major. Here's Savannah Repack and Peter Zackham with today's teacher feature. I'm Peter and this is Mr. Major. He will be with us for our teacher feature. The first question is, when did you start teaching? I started teaching in 2010. Um, and I taught in Virginia, and then I got hired here in 2012 as a seventh grade teacher. How did you want to become a teacher? Well, I had a lot of good teachers uh, that taught me, and, you know, some of the ones that you guys have right now. And so that combined with my love and passion for history, I just wanted to share it. It was like a calling. I've never wanted to be anything else. What do you like to do in your free time? Um, I like to hang out with my family. Uh, we go to Steeler games, we go camping, fishing, hunting, you know, all that good stuff. What's your Halloween costume going to be this year? As always, I'm going to be Charlie Brown. An average active Snapchat user snaps around 20 to 40 times per day to earn about 80 to 100 points and has a score between 50,000 and 150,000. Miranda Stein and Chase Demagon asked students to share their Snap score. My snap score is 214,755. 5,723. 262,796. 1,57,721. My snap score is 997,000. Today is National Chocolate Day. Did you know that consumers spend more than $7 billion a year on chocolate, and U.S. consumers eat 2.8 billion pounds of chocolate annually? We asked students and staff what their favorite thing to eat was with chocolate. Bananas. Strawberries. I like to eat strawberries with chocolate. I like to eat ice cream with chocolate. My favorite thing to eat with chocolate is strawberries. My favorite thing to eat with chocolate is French toast. We'll go with pretzel sticks. No, wait, peanut butter. Yeah, peanut butter. My favorite thing to eat with chocolate is medicine. My favorite thing to eat with chocolate is strawberries. My favorite thing to eat with chocolate is cupcakes. My favorite thing to eat with chocolate is strawberries. Peanut, peanut butter. butter. Chocolate is definitely great to eat with pretzels. Marley Hutchpath and Lily Murphy show you how to make a Halloween treat in our next segment. To make your Halloween chocolate covered pretzel, you'll need melting chocolates, microwave safe bowls, spoons, pretzel rods, and sprinkles to decorate. First, put your white chocolate in a microwave safe bowl. Then microwave for about one minute until it's melted and stir. Coat your pretzel with the white chocolate and let it dry. After it's dry, take your other colors of chocolate and drizzle on top of the pretzels. You can choose to decorate with sprinkles or eyes. And there's your Halloween pretzel. Gabby Cunningham, Sarah Levan, and Brooke Cole took to the halls for today's Halloween hot take when they asked, what is your favorite underrated Halloween candy? Probably dots. I used up chocolate. Hershey bar. Candy corn. Mike and Ike. Candy corn. <laughs> Three Musketeers. Mine is Almond Joy. Candy corn. Oh my gosh, really dark chocolate. Anything with dark chocolate is good. 
It's a love it or hate it kind of candy, but this treat has been around since the 1880s and is one of the most popular Halloween candies. Here are Vince Coletti and Haley Bonneberger with today's Take It or Leave It. Candy corn is disgusting, so I'm going to leave it. I'll take it. Take it. Take it. Reese Myers, take it. I'll take it. I'm Mackenzie and I'll leave it. Leave it. Alex Ammon and I leave it. Take it. If you're looking for something spooky to do this weekend, Ja'Kai McBriar and Jacob Klein highlight some haunted houses in the area. Here are some haunted houses that you can go to to have a fun night. Your first option is Fright Farm. It's located in Smithfield, PA. It costs $25 to $35 per person, and it's open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Your second place is Demon House. It's located in Monongahela, PA. It costs $20 to $40 per person, and it's open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Your third place is 100 Acres Manor. It's located in Bethel Park, PA. It costs $28 per person, and it's open every day. Your fourth place you can go is Castle Blood. It's located in Manesson, PA. It costs $25 per person, and it's open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Your fifth place is Haunted Hills Hayride. It's located in North Versailles. It costs $15 to $20 per person, and it's open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If haunted houses aren't your thing, you could also watch a Halloween movie to get in the spirit. John Macero and Zach Flick pulled students and staff to see which Halloween movie is their favorite. We went around the school asking 15 students from three grades, 7th, 8th, and 9th, and 5 teachers for a total of 50 votes. And here is John Macero with the final results of our Halloween movies. Coming in at 5th place, we have The Nightmare on Elm Street with 4 votes. In 4th place, we have Hocus Pocus with 7. 3rd place, Michael Myers Halloween with 9. 2nd place, The Nightmare Before Christmas with 12. And in 1st place, Beetlejuice with 18 votes. With trick-or-treating just a few days away, Leslie Bell and Ashley Eberhardt asked students and teachers about their costume choice. Barney. Nothing. I think I'm going to be a skeleton. Um, I'm going to be a football player this year. Hi, I'm going to be a 90s girl this year. Shaggy. Z a zombie. For Halloween, I'm going to dress up as a pro football quarterback and go to the Steelers because, boy, do they need one. Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift! If you haven't decided on a costume yet, you could always go as a mummy. Ariana Kramer and Mackenzie Kubistek have today's cat challenge. Pink pinks are riddles with answers that are a pair of rhyming words with the same number of syllables. Can you guess these fall themed hink pinks by Haley Bruno and Boston Solori? What do you call a gentle type of nocturnal animal? An owl? I don't know. I don't know. Um, an owl, I guess. What do you call a chubby feline? A fat cat. cat. A chubby feline. A fat cat. What do you call a big black bird that is not fast? A slow crow. Um. Rooster. Rooster. <laughs> On November 11th, we celebrate Veterans Day honoring those who have served in the U.S. Armed Forces. Don King, Derek Scheller, and Parker Davis ask students and staff members about their veterans and their lives. Uh, my dad's name's uh, Jared Miney and he retired from the Army um, from the Air Force. 
And our Uncle Ray was in the military in the Marines. My grandpa was in the Air Force. My grandpa was in the Air Force too. Our, my pap, and he's in the Army. Um, my grandpa's name was Andrew, and he was in the USA Army. So my grandfather was in the U.S. Navy during World War II, and he was a submarine welder. So he worked underwater, which was really cool, and he was in the South Pacific. We end our show with this day in history shared by Gage Cagle. In 1886, the Statue of Liberty was dedicated in New York City. In 1955, Bill Gates was born. In 1965, the tallest national monument in America, the St. Louis Gateway Arch, was completed. In 2007, Argentina elected its first female president. In 2011, Britain's Commonwealth leaders unanimously agreed that female heirs to the throne would be equal in the rules of succession. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of the Wildcat Insider. We will see you on November 18th.